to them. Uh, so hello everyone who's joining us live. Today on our party session, we have with us Latika Nehra. Uh, Latika is a self-taught ceramic artist working between Germany and India. Uh, she began experimenting with the uh, ceramic medium in 2020. And her process is driven by an understanding of traditional techniques and then developing them with contemporary interpretations. Uh, she's academically trained in graphic design at National Institute of Design, uh, Ahmedabad in India. And her work employs a comprehensive understanding of form and narrative. She primarily uses the coiling technique for making objects that are personable by modeling body gestures and natural textures. And form is dominant uh, as the works are mostly kept unglazed. So, uh, yeah, Latika, over to you. So thank you, Dharani, so much. I've put together a little document to get us through this session. I've used your questions as the as the cue words. I mean, as the cues for this for drafting this presentation. And um, yeah, maybe I'll just get to it. View full screen mode. Yeah. Oh no, no, no! I'm so sorry. I need to do share screen. So bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My bad. Sorry. So you can see my screen now. Yes, it's visible. Super. So yeah. Um, so to like we were just talking before, for me to get to do this session uh, in the frame, get in the frame of mind to do this session, I had to sort of go through my, you know, my hard disks, pull them out, go through some folders of NID days and uh, pick out some images uh, from my time in NID and um, get into the mood or like to begin the where the journey began. And um, I felt, um, I feel it's been a very, very long time, almost like 10 years uh, since I was there. The last time I was at a Bhati session was when I was, when, last time I saw a Bhati session was when I was at one in the auditorium. And um, yeah, so how did my journey into NID sort of a design and NID pan out and what was my experience as a visual communication, as a visual communication student in NID. Um, I put some images that sort of would um, build a mood. I hope that nothing has, not much has changed since. There is Lalu and there's always Chai. There's like the Fachus, the newcomers looking very lost and confused. There's the BBC parties. And this is the graphic design studio, then the graphic design, the GD balcony, if that's still a thing. I mean, yes, I hope it's still a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have a motorcycle and I'm very, very proud of that, that story. So I had to put the image there. Of course, some of us being enthusiastic um, in, um, at Cultural Day, while some people being totally disenchanted. And the last mm -hmm. image there, is of me and my friend uh, passed out at a Bate session in the auditorium. I thought it would be funny to put it here. Mm -hmm. And it goes without saying that in my entire experience of education, because I've also done a master's, I've been in a boarding school, boarding school before this, uh, nothing can, comp nothing can compare to the education that I got at NID. Definitely goes without saying mm -hmm. in terms of how the structure is or just the structure of the college itself. But that said, I feel a lot of my experience of NID came from outside of NID. The fact that the education there was, of course, something, uh, but I feel like I really navigated Ahmedabad when I was there. I was in the old city all the time and got my motorcycle modified there. And I feel like it was these experiences you know, for the first time out of your house and uh, in a new city and getting to understand the social fabric of a totally different city. You know, you're so protected with your parents when you come to this place and you can stay in the community of NID, which is also a little bit of a bubble on its own, but getting out and, you know, sort of seeing the real world and navigating through that is probably what I feel. I take a little bit in my stride as something that made me who I am or like something that adds value to me and my persona, you know, that I'm, it, 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 it was the, the, you know, the post-college hours that were also 
uh, very, very special to me about NID. Uh, one of my, so I did graphic design um, uh, in NID and uh, my most memorable project definitely would be my diploma project because I feel uh, till for almost, I think till the time I didn't get into third year, I was not very serious about, um, you know, college. I, imagine, I also remember that when I joined college, I was just like, what is the point of college if you can't bunk it? I was so upset. And I was just like, I attended school and now I have to attend college and I can't bunk it. And this like, you know, attendance is actually mandatory. Like in foundation was very difficult. You know, you, I remember fainting during, uh, you know, some courses. I was so tired. It, 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 it was very demanding. And then you cannot bunk it. It was like really surprising to me. Like, but it's like everybody bunks college, isn't that the thing? So I was, so I was a little bit more like, you know, I was not very, very focused uh, as a, very cardio oriented right from the very beginning. I was not, I was really like uh, very relaxed with my, the way I took my education in NID. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I do believe that it was during my um, sort of my, my diploma is when I feel like I sort of, um, it all came together. Uh, my diploma guide was Suresh and I was very, very lucky to have mm -hmm. him as my guide. Um, and uh, so the project was on houses of Goa. And it is the it is a time you know on the internet when all this like flat design illustrations is really booming. It's like filling up Behance profiles and everybody's doing it, making flat design logos and you know gradients are out or like or like three D. You know, it's like you're trying to be minimal. So this is yeah. coming in. So at that time, that was the that was where my uh, where my project sort of came. I was I was I was I was, uh, interned with uh, Beard Design in Goa, and the project was to document these houses of Goa. Portuguese houses of Goa and make an illustrative website. Um, super fun project, super nice. Four months I was in Goa. I think more than making the illustrations, which is basically sitting on the screen digitally, illustrator, blah, blah. I really enjoyed searching for these houses in Goa. And uh, you must note that this is the time pre Google Maps. Like, I mean, Google Maps are there, but you're not using them so much. You know, you're still like relying on the corner shop to ask people for directions. Right. And uh, this sort of like, you know, added so much to that story because you took your scooty, you stopped at this corner shop and you know, you know, looking, ye kahan pe hai, ye, you know, show me the way and everything. And there was so much more interaction, so much more involvement than just like, you know, going from A to B. Like reaching A to B had the whole alphabet set, you know, in the middle, like the, the stuff that happened. And I feel like that was, again, something to me very, very memorable about the project. Because I feel like it's these experiences that sort of like add to you, who you are. Hmm. Anyways, um, um, and I like this question that you had written, like asking if I had any experimentation with ceramics during that time. And to be honest, I have only done ceramics and we didn't even call it ceramics. It was called pottery like everybody else, you know, like in art school, when you have art and craft classes and uh, you have these pottery classes, I did uh, pottery back then. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was like kid stuff. Like it was not like something serious. We used to, we only had one type of clay, terracotta, red clay. You had to make one shape and then, you know, something. So it was very basic uh, in school, but I found this one image. I love the quality of this image. It's really taken from a Sony Rickson phone. Like, you know, which was yeah. not the, it's like this really chota phone with a chota screen and like, and this is a, one of the pottery things that I made in NID. Mm -hmm. Literally right now it looks like some Mohan Jadaro pottery <laughs> because it looks so ancient in this, in this image. But mm -hmm. this was um, in the materials thing. I didn't even know I did it, but there was, this was the only uh, pottery ceramics that I did in NID. Mm -hmm. And I had no, n never ever thought that I was going to get into this. I mean, NID had ceramic and glass design. If I had that education, I mean, that would have been so cool, but I mean, I didn't even consider it. Now, right. sometimes, now sometimes where I, where I am and I want an education, I'm like, shit, NID had it. Can I still do a master's there or something <laughs> like, you know, because you get, there's a lot of knowledge you, you yeah. get, you know, when you are studying. And I, I really respect that because I know, like from, know that from my graphic design background, right? Like education is, um, is necessary. Like, you know, it, it goes a long way. Totally copied that from somebody somewhere I heard, but, um, yeah, so then yeah, uh, moving on to post NID after I did my 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 diploma project, um, post NID, my professional experience was uh, not very, uh, I would say it was not, 
um, it didn't follow a very similar path like my peer, my like my my batchmates like you know everybody went into design studios and did very classic uh, graphic design projects branding websites and you know this is where everybody's path went i think i was really going through a rebellious sort of a little bit of a rebellious phase in my own self and my own belief system and i started to already be disenchanted by graphic design and feeling like oh i mean what am i doing as a graphic designer i'm doing branding for soap and i'm only like you know help it sell better but there are already 10000 soaps do i need to be doing this like you know is, is why am i adding to the clutter and why am i helping this clutter sell better it's it to me just felt uh, you know i was having a bit of a war with my own with my own practice and and i felt like okay i feel like i can uh, and i think i was very much inspired by tarun tarundeep uh, girdar like he does a lot of i remember him doing a lot of social projects for the government and that to me was very like nice like like i mean like here is the person who basically has the skill set and he's using them in place for social change in places where people don't really care how pretty it is but things where things work where things are needed where communication needs to happen so i feel like i was very much uh, um you know i i liked i i really respected that so i found myself applying to greenpeace because i was very like environment conscious you know and uh, wanting you know be the voice for the wildlife in india and all these things very very passionate about this stuff and i guess these images can sort of depict that you know this is me in my the first images like from me in my diary that i had made in uh, when i was in goa already for my project you know mm-hmm. um just feeling and i joined um, i used to go for aam aadmi party uh, meetings in the beginnings like very very early on when they were having like their sessions in old delhi we used to be attending that and feeling you know going for protests and all of that stuff uh, we also went for a protest against like rss because they wanted to get people married off uh, if they found couples hanging out on valentines day so they said that bas shaadi kara denge so again being involved in all of this stuff in the last image is a image that um, is an advertisement that i designed for uh, greenpeace um Uh, for it was like a campaign against the coal mining in the forest of mahan mm. apart from that i did a lot of like campaign related work where i did a lot of graphic design and like designing logos for their campaigns brochures banners website stuff social media all these things came and i feel like the intention over here of course it's more about communication and getting the message through and <clears throat> i think less about um what is the next big thing in design or next big uh, i don't know next you know great typography that you could use or like i don't know ui you know ui ux and all these things were it came much later this is still like very much in print and so i felt like i guess my i was this is where i was when i was working with them the other campaigns were uh, that i worked on like i did a lot of annual reports uh, for them then uh, farm of protests all these things like trying to make it as uh, visually involving in my own capacity like a little bit um you know i think i always had this forte for uh, illustration i always enjoyed it and i feel like i really gave uh, to greenpeace like that side like uh, instead of just using images because they had very strong campaigning images but to also be to involve other people in like basically became a little bit more illustrative i would say my right. two cents there but when i was in greenpeace was also the time when it was like um cracked down by the government you know for being anti national so the around this time uh, the funding was cut uh, from greenpeace because basically they felt that uh, the government sort of was, was uh, felt very strongly that if we protested against um, coal coal mining in india it was because we had foreign funding hence foreign vested interests that we want to bring down the gdp of india but they never looked at the point where it was like it was about tribal rights deforestation being a bad thing let's go for sustainable energy you know but like the the agenda was so basically greenpeace really suffered around that time so we had to like basically it was sort of shut down uh, because of uh, all this like crackdown that we had um so around after after this i sort of like i was still sort of in delhi i was doing a bit of like illustration based projects i was doing some branding for you know restaurant or something so i did some classical stuff but i think my work was mostly like i enjoyed i tried to get what i liked about it so i was like mm-hmm. i'm going to do illustrations because it's what i like and that's how i drive the project mm-hmm. you know i wouldn't care so much about the rest um yeah 
moving on after after greenpeace i went to ecostream in sikkim and that was my first i would say no actually yeah i did my internship uh, my internship with kuti monga my first internship was with kuti monga a um turmeric design with pulak yeah. patnagar uh, also he was he was there with we were there together and this was in green park and this is i think 2012 and she was really a very 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 good influence uh, on me in terms of how holistic she was with like her how much she added to the brand then you know like it was very i mean you're very young very impressionable and um, in the right way with her because she was really like out there on the street she was doing like this food typography very early days you know like uh, when she started to do this it was very very nice with her so this was my first design uh, studio experience and weird design and then third one was actually echo stream in um, sikkim gangtok the the best um, i can't say that for everything but it was a really really nice experience i met sonam there sonam glatsen and he was uh, they echo stream in, in sikkim is really working on projects uh, very close to the government of sikkim so again here was something that felt very real like a project coming from the sikkim government it's for it's for like say buckwheat you know um or it's for the the tea the grains there and i felt like ha huh, this is not this is feels very like grassroots and um, you know people there are very motivated and it was very nice so i got to do a project there which was very nice again very similar to the goa project where i got to like travel a lot i was supposed to build, build like a visual library for uh for textiles for products like just basically a booklet of visuals that could be used for textiles could be used for products as inspiration a gamut of sort a visual gamut of sort and this was very nice because i already hiked around uh, sikkim uh, for a month and i had you know uh, moved around a lot um, so it felt like it came very naturally this very organic um, mm-hmm. translation of my experience and i loved illustrating so i just knew exactly you know these aspects that seen like a lot of rhododendrons mm-hmm. it has the highest population of butterflies these patterns that i could pull out from there the mountains everything you know so it was very nice like i'd seen this i'd experienced it and i could make it like i didn't have to do this research on wikipedia i had literally been there so very very memorable <clears throat> okay let's forget graphic design you know because this is not about that right and it's um this is the story after it which is basically story yeah the story behind my shift to ceramic design never called it ceramic design but i think it's like a that's like a way like a term that would be used in institutes i just call it ceramics it just sounds mm-hmm. a little bit more uppity than saying pottery <laughs> i don't even know <laughs> um yeah so this happens uh, when i moved to germany for my masters i mo- wanted to go i wanted to um study a little bit more i didn't want to basically like you know after my sikkim experience i wanted to study a little bit more and i and i wasn't sure what i wanted to do i didn't want to i definitely knew i didn't i wasn't looking for a specialization and hence i found this course in this arhat university in dessau which was a open masters course called integrated design and how it was structured was basically 2d 3d and 4d so you went through your you went through the semesters in this um, in this format like you you did projects that were 2d based 3d would involve product 4d was basically ui ux interactive design or an app design mm-hmm. um but coming to the whole point is that you know when i moved to germany it was such a such a shocking contrast to where i'm from and i was not in a very big city i was in a small city and the first thing that happens is when you distance yourself from your own country for a while and you are in a totally different contrast and you're missing home you start to really really remember all the things that you like about it the things that you would have never looked when you when you you would have not realized when you were there or you you just start to see things back home in a very different light and it's almost very nostalgic and it's like oh i love how loud people are oh my god i love how bright colors are i like i like miss i miss dhakka dhakka mukhi and all of that you know in the streets and and all these things you're just like oh god i need to get out there's so many people and everything you know you start to like look at them as uh, something uh, you start to admire them and i feel like all of this sort of accumulated this feeling this nostalgia accumulated to my master master thesis oh yeah coming to yeah your love for india you start that's basically i think a bolivian flag but somehow it's like ye to india hai you know it's i have my first flatmate my roommate was from bolivia and you're going to mustard fields and you're enacting all these like ddlj scenes you know missing your country and then you start to also go through your parents whatsapp forwards like you know because you're missing them so missing india so much and hence it's like my master thesis which is basically i feel 
the reason I am trying to bring is why how ceramics sort of came is because it was this nostalgia around India about these traditional practices in India, all these traditional practices in India that involved a lot of handwork, the use of hand uh, in their act, in the making, in the in just in this the structural um, aspect of it, the involvement of hand, hand work was very intense in these activities, mm -hmm. and hence somehow the natural consequence was a sustainable, you know, balance with the environment. You know, so what I'm trying to do is what I try to do is like look at all these traditional practices in India and recognize them as uh, something uh, something that have always been sustainable, always been in in a way with ba balance with nature, but we don't see them as such, and it's like. You know, ten years later, you will get this new concept of from from somewhere outside, and become like the new fad of being organic, being vegan, being you know, um, uh, being sustainable. But it's like it's already there. All you have to do is just like look around. You don't have to reinvent stuff. You just have to like, um, you know, be we look at certain things sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think my moment of realization was when I was in Berlin. I was in this uh, zero waste store in Berlin and I'm just like oh so cool look at this all these people coming in with their glass jars <clears throat> taking dal from a dispenser and you know <clears throat> yeah taking like lentils from a dispenser vegetables in a in a paper bag or something and it's like basically um, getting out of the store uh, with no waste no packaging <clears throat> And so here I felt like, oh my God, here is a, uh, oh my God, this is such a great concept. This should totally be there in India. I'm like, oh my God, this is what India needs. Uh, we have such a big waste problem. I, this is what my, I'm going to make my thesis about this. But the moment I was outside the door, I had already felt like I've been here before. And it's the Kirana stores in India. We have zero waste stores as a concept that has always, always been there. It's not something that is uh, like, uh, it's not something that needs to be, needs to come back. It's just, it's always been there. So I felt like this is where the, you know, the discovery began sort of like, what else can I see that has already been there? Then there were things like pretty much like big examples around how like, you know, Patal, these leaf plates that have been used in our, in, in India forever. And um, you could see like Kickstarter campaigns of people patenting this stuff, the Datun and all these things like they're like, and later years, later will come to India as like, you know, you should use this stuff. It's like organ <laughs> organic. It's like, come on, we have this. Let's like, you know, relook at them and like not come up with new concepts. Like don't, we don't need to make like a wooden uh, toothbrush or something. Again, so one of the focuses of the thesis was a lot about this hand-eye coordination and this building of a bond when you work with a material. So the, the thing is, what I liked about um, handwork uh, per se is that it's just, it's a slower, it's, a, it's slow. Uh, it relies on human capacity, on human energy. So you can't, um, so one, it's slower. Two, you cannot make too much. Three, you get tired and you take a break. Fourth, it relies on like somehow community you know, so there were so many aspects about handwork that just seemed like so like uh, somehow in balance and sync with what I felt uh, or what I felt strongly for that I sort of, uh, I feel like this is where the seed sort of was incepted. That I always felt that moving on, I would like to be involved in my in the work that I do, that I'm using my hand. Of course, when I'm, you know, designing as a graphic designer, I am using my hands to, you know, design stuff. But this is something different. It's about like being directly in touch, tangible material. Yeah. It's very different. There's not a middle middle surface that, you know, there's not a middle point that you're crossing over to, to the final outcome. Mm -hmm. There is this me and this one material, we work on it and it's like, that's how it is. So this is something, this was something different, I felt. And uh, somehow more fulfilling. And I feel like, um, like I said, I felt like this is the time when I felt the seed had sort of, uh, I felt this discontent, like this contentment with the uh, designing, sitting on my desk for hours, chuck, 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 and you know, I'm slouching and you know, I'm just like, my posture is bad, my eyes were hurting. I'm just like, what am I working on? And I felt a lot of like, I didn't, I didn't think I, I in professional, professionally, I don't think I enjoyed my work so much. There were very rare times that I enjoyed the work. And I always felt like I had to do something on the side of my own. And I felt like it had to involve some sort of handwork, like intensive handwork, that it made me feel a little bit like okay, things are in sync. I'm feeling a little bit, you know, 
chap, chap, like aligned somehow. And I started vigorously painting. After my master's, I moved to Berlin and I decided to work as a freelance designer for a couple of companies, a small, little bit small gigs here and there, uh, where I was not doing very much, I would say, passionate graphic design work. I was just um, aiding, you know, making some documents, making some not so, nothing that I'm, I can say is like, you know, had a lot of creative input. Yeah, I guess that's also why I felt that I needed something on the side that helped me bring, bring my my creative voice in a way or like this thing that I felt always this earth that I had to do something of my own. So I started painting a lot and um, cut to 2020. This is um, when I had like a really sort of uh, expanded, like uh, it was not something, this is when I also 2020, I lose a lot of work gig. I have a lot more time to do my painting stuff and I'm like, okay, now I'm going to try to channelize this into into a career of some sort. And what a stupid time to try to have an art career. Like 2020 is like when people are thinking about food, health, security. Art is the last thing that comes on anybody's mind or like can even consider it as, as something essential. Music, fashion, these events and all of them were like just completely cut off. Like this was like, like and, and here I'm sitting in Berlin, like having absolutely no background in art and uh, knowing no nobody here, no gallery here, no, and I'm like, I'm gonna become an artist. I started painting these huge canvases and I'm just like, um, you know, I had, of course, I, I had, I knew I had, I had a lot to give creatively, like, cause I, could, I was painting these, ca these canvases. I mean, there's something in my head, my, there's inspiration that is churning out in these paintings. You know, it's not like I'm just, mm -hmm. I want to be an artist and I have several paint. I had a lot to say. I was inspired constantly. I wanted to, and I was taking out in painting, but I felt that somehow by the middle of 2020, the discontent, not again, discontentment, I was just, I got a bit scared. I was like, this is not going to work. Like nobody's gonna, uh, I don't wanna sell my stuff online. Like that's not the point. I want people to experience this, understand this. And I felt like maybe uh, also with painting because I had a background in illustration, I felt that I knew a lot. Like I knew a lot about this, you know, the art styles, the art periods. So I was very judgmental with my work. So I looked back, I looked at him like, it's looking like this, it's looking like that. Mm -hmm. And I was very, very critical. So, you know, while I was creatively expressing and enjoying the process, I was also like very unsure of myself because I was not also the, I was not getting any confirmation for this stuff, you know, because uh, yeah. there was no space for art around that time. Mm -hmm. So I felt like, okay, I need to take a break and I need to just like, switch my clean my head switch a medium like let me do something else today let me just like not paint for a while and do something else and uh it's funny because like the last painting i made you can see in the corner has a little bit of a greek vase on the side this is literally, <laughs> literally the last painting i made and um i think from here when i made this i was just like you know what i'm gonna make i'm gonna make like a ceramic piece or something so i went to a stationery shop and i went and bought like a piece of clay and I just put this blob there and I just, you know, side hand building. I use my hands to make these coils, which is what I do. I do, I do coiling, which is uh, the most ancient technique of hand building. You make these noodles and you basically wrap them around and then the surface grows, you merge it in. Again, yeah. for me, it's like, I said, when I was doing this, I said to listen to my, my, my art school teacher's voice came in my head somehow. You know, it's like she was telling me, Latika, or if you merge it or like, you know, move it. Here. It's so, it was really nice because like, I feel like I got, a, I started to remember her and how she taught me sir, uh, like pottery. And that's mm -hmm. how I built. I, in fact, wrote, I wrote a message to her later also. I said, ma'am, today, after 15 years, you really, you've helped me once again to, you know, get back to ceramics and I really like to get back to pottery. Mm -hmm. And um, she was very happy, very, very proud. And um, anyways. Now, after I finished this, like this first piece that I made and a couple of pieces I made, I looked at them. I looked at them and I felt like, okay, here is something that is tangible. It has a function. I can try to sell this to you without a body of text mm -hmm. that needs to be, go along with it. Like some, some artistic faff uh, that needs to go through some, you know, gallery and, you know, thrust are like, you know, here is something tangible, you know, it's like, you, you can understand it, I can understand it, and you know, we can have a transaction. So I felt like maybe this is something I can stick to in terms of sustenance for in an art field. Like, let me, and to be honest, it, before it even became about this, it was just very rewarding to just be lost in the process for five hours straight. I have been in such a frenzy ever since I, since I began, at least in the first two years, the way I have worked, 
I have no idea where that energy came from. Like, I don't think I felt this passionate about anything uh, to create. Like I, I've, I've literally had nights where I've been like, I've not been able to sleep because I'm waiting very excited next morning to go and execute something. And I have this idea of like, I'm sleeping and I'm, I have to like, oh, I need to make a sketch quickly. <laughs> like, you know, before I forget it, I will not remember it tomorrow or something. And I, I feel very like, um, I've, I've been very excited after I got in, sort of got into the field. And um, so um, I joined like a community studio close by and um, I feel that was a very good idea because it's sort of like I learned a lot of different techniques you learn from people and okay my whole experience with ceramics has been behind the mask because it was uh, you know uh, 2020 and then the whole pandemic year so every time I was like uh, making my ceramics I wore a mask and now that the mask policy is not there anymore I in the beginning I felt very uncomfortable I was just like I can't I can't it's like helps me focus it's like my glasses or something because I've always you know worn it so once I moved to a ceramic studio, I uh, my I feel definitely my craft grew a lot more. I learned a lot more from people around there, and um, yeah, I, like I said, I've just um, been a bit nonstop in this field for the last two, three, two, two, three years, two years maybe now. Okay. And I'll just take you through my collections. The first collection that I made. I'm not going to talk so much about what was the thought behind them right now. I'm just just going to show you what what what's out what I did, what is out there. Sure. I feel it's. Um, I think every piece has somehow an, an inspiration or something that I wanted to try, some some skill that I was trying to learn, some technique, some clay I want to uh, you know get into or something. And everything everything has a, I would say every piece would have a story, but I sort of have to club them together as a collection of works. And this is something that I work conceptually always on. And I think that comes from graphic design, you know, trying to like document your work, think of a concept and like always trying to streamline, like give yourself constraints. So when I began with ceramics, the one constraint that I gave myself is that I'm going to try to build around a cavity. So I'll like stick to like, let's not get into wall art. Let me not get into tableware, but I'll stick to a cavity and build around it. And my artistic work would be around this cavity, sculpturally, you know, whatever I add to it, but as, as a functional piece, it could be used as a vase, for example. This is my first collection. Uh, this is 2020. These are all the pieces, different uh, clay. Uh, one of the thing is that my clay has a lot of, the clay that I use has a lot of grain. So it's not the kind of uh, um, thin, um, not thin, what's the word? Uh, like the, the ceramics, the, the, pot, the clay that you use for wheel is very different than the clay that I use for hand building because it has a lot of shamot, which is like this grain sandstone, which is already like fired pottery. So it helps to build structure. So when you can build bigger, so the clay will not like slop. Um, so that's why the textures are very rough. The thing is, I was, I never reached glazing. Glazing is a very important part of ceramics. Like, you know, your glazure or glaze, or it's like this liquid glass that is there's a final layer. And that's a whole different field. It's like paints, opening a box of paints, but it's also like Pandora's box. It's like, oh my God, the possibilities. It's frightening. I'm still stuck in the point when I'm still just enjoying form, just simply sticking to form, loving the, loving what the outcomes can be. And I will eventually move into glazing more but I feel like I'm, I need to exhaust this then move on to the next okay so after my first collection uh, that I made in Berlin I came back to India and I went to the first place that I remember ceramics or pottery as and it was blue pottery Right. And, uh, you know, growing up, I was, I was in Rajasthan and blue pottery is the first thing that I saw. Of course, matkas and all is also one thing, but I mean, in terms of traditional craft and uh, something that I was intrigued by, I felt blue pottery and I'm like, oh my God, they have so much color and so much like, how should I say, um, illustrations, uh, not illustrations, sorry. I mean, floral designs, patterns, in intricate pattern, craft work and everything. And I was like, this is going to be so exciting. I can make my shapes and I would paint them uh, in this like blue pottery style, like, wow. But I was completely wrong because the process of blue pottery is not like hand building. You cannot take the material of blue pottery and try to make a big piece. It's, it requires molds. So it's like literally rolling out a roti, putting it in a bartan or a mold, pressing it down and getting the shape. And with five to six shapes, you build a piece. 
So you combine one plane, second plane, third plane, and the neck. Like you can see in the image on top in the corner, it's like made with three, four pieces. Right. This one, this image, yeah. And these are the these are the molds they are like left anyway. So it was very shocking to me. I was a bit frustrated. I was like, make, I, I really wanted to do what I knew, but here I took like you know, let me check the molds and I will make something. One of the things was that I didn't. Uh, I chose very very much that I will not be um, painting my pieces because I felt the process was so intensive. Like you will, when you buy a piece of blue pottery, you have no idea what it takes to make that piece because you're only looking at its um, intricate forms and you're like, wow, I like this blue color. I like this yellow color. I like this heart shape. But you don't know like what goes behind making it. And I felt like that was the story I wanted to tell through my pieces. So I was like, I'm not painting them. I will take inspiration from the forms that you use and make that as a as one of the shapes. So I used the floral shapes that they use, like the leaves and everything, and I made my shapes from that. But I really wanted people to see the surface. Mm -hmm. So um, I would really recommend that if anybody wants to know more about this, they can check my website. Uh, I've really documented this uh, project with a lot of love and um, very cinematically. So you will really enjoy it to see it and to learn about it. And you can see the final works there, but continuing here. So these were the shapes that I chose, like, you know, this heart, pan shape, tash patta, like the chidi, all this, and the leaf. And these were my final, like some of the final works that you can see here, you, they're completely plain. They have mm -hmm. no color. In fact, the craftsmen that I worked with in Jaipur, uh, Ram Gopal Saini and, <clears throat> and uh, um, I remember he said, ye kya kar diya hai? Aapne to bilkul time waste ho kar diya hai. Aapne to paint hi nahi kar hai. Like you've like, <laughs> Like he said that the pieces were looking naked and that, that it wasn't nice because they, so he, for them, it was very shocking that they, who are, what are these? Of course, in time, they like, you know, could find way to appreciate it, but they just felt like I had to like make them wear some clothes because they were just like looking there. But I did find that a lot of people appreciated this uh, because, uh, you know, it, uh, a lot of people could see the beauty in the form and uh, not uh, like liked what was there. Okay. Okay. My third collection, third, fourth collection is also something that I made in India. This is around uh, May and there's like a, the, the Delta wave is like um, blown up in India, like before that, around before that. And Rhea Kapoor had like messaged me on Instagram and she asked me for like a private collection. So I was very excited and I was just like, oh, I really want to make something for her. Like, you know, I mean, how cool is this? Like, you know, she wants some work from me and she's found me and <clears throat> I really wanted to do something, but I've never worked in India, like in, in pottery, like I don't know where to get the clay from. I don't know which studio I can use. So this was very exciting because I had to go literally to a, sh to a factory in some place in Delhi to get the clay. And the guy used to supply to pottery schools in India. So I took some clay from him and I told him, please, you need to add this like sandstone in it. And he couldn't believe like I was asking him, he's like, nobody adds this. I was like, no, but the kind of work I, so it was, it was nice figuring this out. Then I went to Delhi, I met a few potters there. So, you know, seeing the pottery scene through this project was very nice. And I also found some, uh, like a person who has a gas kiln in Chhatarpur, where I took the pieces to fire them because I don't have my own kiln. And so I, you know, meeting a Bengali artist there and he makes these murals for Delhi, like buildings in Delhi. So just knowing all of this was very nice. So connecting with the pottery community in India was a very nice experience. Although I do believe that I had COVID when I parceled the pieces to Ria. <laughs> like I am pretty sure that I was like, I was like feeling dizzy and I'm giving the pieces. Like at that time I didn't know. And, and I actually, mm -hmm. after that I got COVID. So, mm -hmm. but the project was, I mean, it was very nice to do because uh, I feel like the results that came out with gas firing, as you can see at the bottom are very interesting because mm -hmm. gas firing is actually fire in the kiln. And that adds to the surface, which you will never get in an electric kiln. In an electric kiln, it matures, but the, the heat or the energy does not add to the piece. But in gas, it can give some fascinating results that you never planned for, which is very nice. Fifth, uh, I was back in Berlin and I feel like now you can see that my work is moving more towards sculptures, less towards like this vase thing. And I'm sort of, sort of like my, it's broadening up into more like you see it for its like you identify the piece more for its like form than for its function so it's like your the interaction of my work I feel like is changing by now and I'm already very much like not yet exhausted by making stuff like I still have like so much to do okay. 
and you know this is just some of the stuff this is i also like building in series so it gives you a little bit like a practice you know you take one shape and you try to like build three four versions of it so it's, it's a bit difficult because to control clay that way is like it's a bit challenging you can always like you know have it to behave the same way because you can't it's not a mold it's built by hand this was the latest stuff that i did work, did in india uh, this year and it was um, it was um, what was it <laughs> it was uh, yeah it was recently sold on uh, in an art um, in an art gallery online called cultivate art global i think all the works were sold which was really pretty cool for me because the response was very good like i think like few day, like a day before the exhibition went live like some of the works had already been booked i was very very excited that uh, there was like such a like people were interested and there was some demand for these kind of works you know you might you might people might assume that it's like this kind of demand doesn't exist in india for these kind of artworks i mean at least i would have assumed also very early on that maybe only in europe i would find people who are interested mm -hmm. but a lot of people in india have bought my work and have shown a lot of interest and um, there is appreciation for this kind of sculptural work which is not very traditional like it's not very like in even in the traditional pottery uh, as an art like the history of pottery artists and i have absolutely very little understanding of that you know but i can imagine like with there is like a lot of uh, work and lot of set standards already out there okay. that people are aware of or people know or used to but i was happy that so this is something new and that people could find some appreciation for it uh i just put some images of some features that you know i've had recently i think that uh, it's always nice to collaborate um in some way like with a did a recent project project with a photographer here in in Ber in berlin and you know lovebirds the fashion brand we did like this um a fashion shoot where we mixed the you know build a sculptural space with it was it was very nice like i liked the thing is i feel like it the the ceramics is a medium i'm very much into right now but it's not my it's, it doesn't limit me and i feel like it doesn't i i'm also doing prints on the side so along with my works i'm developing some print work uh, which is a different technique so and i'm doing photography on the side i'm doing this other collage related stuff so i feel like i think it's just a starting point for me as an artist now mm -hmm. that ceramics is my you know it i stepped into it but i do not like this is not something that i would stick to always and i would like to explore a lot more medium and um, it's just that you know slowly <laughs> um i just need to like have a piece of watermelon yes, yes, it's been um it's been so great just going through your journey and like thank you for just pouring your heart out and i think so many of us relate to the the kind of journey that you've gone that you've gone through like really questioning the intent of your work and then finally finding something that you really love doing and yeah i'm sure our audiences are also really enjoying listening and watching your work do you think people are even online <laughs> i don't know yeah there are 30 people watching okay super but i guess this can stay online for a bit so people can still see to yeah. later for some time yeah 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 i think that out of all the questions that you sent me i kept a few on the side hmm. because i really felt like i really wanted to speak about them <clears throat> one of the biggest challenges has been when you do your own thing is you don't know when to stop when you work for somebody when you do a job you have a beginning and an end time and that's you know it starts and it gets over but when you when you do your own thing oh god nixi my cat just fell down um when when you do your own thing uh, when you do your own thing you never stop you just like you're constantly involved so even when you're on a holiday and you see something very nice and you're like oh so great ah it's an idea for something like you know but you don't think to think about that when you're doing when you're doing work for somebody you think for yourself yeah so it's like but not for like when it's like uh, if for the companies that i was working for i'm like in my whole i'm like no way I'm like nobody contact me no email no nothing you know but when you're doing it for yourself it's like you're always involved it's like so it's like you never free this is one of the biggest challenge um of course the fact that i've had to learn everything on my own it's been great to go through youtube learn through people 
uh, learn from people in, in the community studio. That's not the that's not really the difficult part because you know um, there is a lot of ways to learn now today, but the doing everything of on your own is so difficult. So I'm gonna list down something. I will be buying my material. Let's say wait, fine. Everybody has to do that. You buy the material. You think of the concept. You make the piece. You once it's made, you photograph the piece. After you photograph the piece. you sort of like have to document it or build like a sort of like a let's say um like a little bit of a marketing around it or not marketing but basically you have to put it out there so you know the you're doing the the let's say the social media for it so you're making you're photographing you're doing social media you're doing the logistics which is basically replying to emails and messages of people showing interest in your work different spaces either it's a gallery it's a store so have to have different ways of communicating to different spaces because some people take commissions some people don't take a commission some people want to have like a just an exhibit you have to you have to the change your narrative each time you know in the, this is all in the very beginning you know when you're when you're starting out that you have to do everything on your own then once this is done you're going to pack your piece you're going to and packing is something that i cannot trust anybody else because this is the most crucial part like the piece reaching somebody in let's say in la like recently i just shipped to work to la and it's the first time i ever parceled something i'm like oh my god it's going so far over the ocean <laughs> so delicate mm-hmm. i have to pack it a zillion times in a box in a big, it's like an inception of boxes just so that you know like this work i've put in uh it has to reach safely you know so so this is a huge part and like shipping and then managing the logistics you're doing the taxes for it the invoicing it's just basically having to do a lot lot of this stuff on your own it's very 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 challenging right hopefully i in the future i should have somebody who can manage this for me <laughs> but as of now the thing is one of the things is with me is that i want to keep my practice very small scale I don't have these like plans to like scale up and be like this mass producer of ceramic objects. I want to work on few things, but that's the whole point. I got into it, you know. Like I want to work with my hands. I want to work in limited capacity. I don't want to have this exploitative like uh, every house can have one of my pieces, like kitsch objects, you know. Like as if like the idea of like being successful in something is that you basically scale up and you mass produce. That is like not my thought ever, and it'll never be. i would like to stay in a limited capacity build good work reach out to a few people who can appreciate it who will not question the price of the hours that i take to make it and i get the value so i might not i might not um, be so easily available but i'm also like not selling everything like you know putting my stuff on a t-shirt on a mug and all these things like you know it's like you have to stop somewhere you know like you have to you have to take a take a call like you know with that like how much yeah mm. so one of the things that i feel very much has been a part of my journey as ceramic artist is that i started in 2020 and i started to put my work out there on instagram yeah and i will not deny that the confirmation that i got and the appreciation that i got through the chat, through that medium helped me a lot in producing more and it becoming a more of a real thing it, and it's ironic i'm actually making something real but it becomes real in another space which is virtual and i will i can i will appreciate it of course for that but i've always had a very like how should i say mixed relationship mixed feelings about social media and its dependency like i feel like you can't completely depend on that you cannot like put yourself like oh my god i haven't posted in a while i must post like oh that is just like that's where things start to like you know you have to remember you're in control and uh, that the medium doesn't control you and you're not dictated by it um that said i will definitely say that it helped me a lot and especially at a very early stage in my career i had a lot of friends not a lot of friends a few good friends who really shared my work and i feel like that very much helped me get a start pretty early like you must understand i've just started in 2020 and mm-hmm. i am at this position where i'm like you know selling to a few galleries or stores and i have some recognition people have liked my work have bought my work and this has become a little bit of a real thing and i can basically push my design career completely aside and focus on this completely yeah so this has happened in a matter of 2 years i will not deny that my work is uh, you know not good or not worthy mm-hmm. i do believe that of course the work is good but i do feel like not everybody gets lucky like that you know 
some people are doing really good work but they do not get noticed you know mm-hmm. so i feel like definitely a few of my friends like you know my friend khyati she really shared my work a lot in my early days or even now and i feel it helped reach out to a lot of people you know noticing my my work and appreciating it so these things really definitely helped me so i will not um um have any reservations about it yet i feel you have to invest in real life connections that you make what if suddenly like this medium doesn't exist mm-hmm. who is going to be who knows your work in the city itself who in ground in 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 real ground you can reach out and talk to you about your work so this is like this 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 um life this world is like equally sort of important to work on and build build towards i feel yeah um there was something else also actually i wanted to say about this thing about you know like um the because i feel like this is a very um social media it is you have to be skeptical you know yeah. we or i have always been and i feel it's a, it's it is a very uh, it's important to very much reason out like uh, how you use it and things like that and again one of the things i like to do yeah one of the things is i have written some cue words down there so i know what i have to say is that i don't push my work out so much as a sales point of view if you know this like it's like i don't um, i'm not trying to sell my work so much i'm basically sharing the process of making and mm-hmm. like you know some sh- sharing with you my art i'm not sharing with you that buy this it's for this Honor much commodity yes. yes it's not like a product available click um buy shop now hmm. that is never that's not something i do that's not something i can imagine doing of course i want people to buy my work but there is like a sort of a, like a you know a decorum to those the, a way of doing that like the, because i don't make so much work so i'm not even pushing it out so much and hmm. i would like it to stay between like audiences that is like who can appreciate it anyways i don't push my work out for sales so much but i'm it's for me about sharing my journey as an artist the space i use i use the space for that right Okay, I think I'm 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 done, Tharani. Like this is this is. Uh, I think my like throat will dry out too much. Maybe I open it to it to questions because I feel like what you have. Yeah. It take more time. It would take some time. Yeah. So for the audience, you can write in your questions in the live chat if you want. And um, yeah, until then maybe you can take a short break. and then talk about the rest of them yeah a few okay. things that are left how much time yeah. is for 20 minutes no or 25 minutes uh yeah so uh, we are done with like 55 minutes now but we can still we still have like 10 15 oh minutes. awesome i spoke for 55 minutes <laughs> really didn't feel like it like no it didn't <laughs> <laughs> so like i was just thinking how a lot of us um aren't very confident with just doing what we would like like even right now if i talk about graphic design and nid a lot of my classmates do like we do always question the intent of our work or um work satisfaction and it's like what do you think helped you like go into although your journey says a lot about what helped you but do you think there was any anything specific about your mindset or how you approach your work or how you approach your professional life that helped you kind of navigate or be so open towards shifting to art and then to ceramics and now as you're saying you're also working with print and so many other mediums so anything you would like to share on that lines mm, i know it's like it's i i know what you mean i mean but i feel like you have to face the discomfort till you really realize what you really want to do right. you know you, you you have to have enough of that that mm. to know that i don't want to do this and then that path to what you want will become more clearer and mm. if you feel the you know it's just basically if you're not feeling good like you have to work towards feeling good you know mm. you don't have to, like some people don't have the option some people have to earn and have to like take it in like you know and i feel i feel bad for that situation maybe i was a little bit of course i have to earn as well but uh, i feel like some people have a more more of a need it's like you know of a, of the, uh, where you know you don't have that kind of freedom that you can choose what you want to do all the time i think in 
but I feel I can speak for some people who might have slight of the, like op- slight of the chance of an option. I feel you have to face enough of these like bad experiences. You don't have to face it. Sometimes you just have to like uh, you know you can't see you can't one of the things is like you have to be smart. You can't just be like oh I want to be an artist and I'm you know this is what I'm going to do. You have to see how good you are at it. How much time you're able to put into it. Be be a really be realistic. Don't be idealistic but realistic right. about it. And that like don't chase the idea of the person uh, of this cloud of like what it's like to be but um to really be true to what you like to do do you actually enjoy what you like to enjoy and what can you bring to it like what is you know so i i, I don't think i answered the the question that you asked or what you were saying but um i always felt that i wanted to do something of my own it was always in the back of my head because i didn't feel very much uh, like i just felt that you know sometimes when you're in a in a job and you feel like somebody's telling you something because they're senior and you have to listen to it and you know you're listening to it and you're just like yeah but the world should work differently you feel this like you know you yeah. feel this feeling that no it should not be like this i know that this works but this is not right so you know you feel this like you basically i basically worked on feeling a little bit in sync you know that how i feel how i what i believe in is something i can is what i do also and when i you know so, so maybe just worked on this somehow like sort of an alignment of like your practice and what you believe is something similar right you know so i i feel like once you find that synchronizing of mm-hmm. thoughts and action is when you really feel like okay this is fine this is good and you have to also like you can't always be like this like you can't always be discontent with um let's say like working is not always bad of course there are some great experiences and great uh, people are doing some great work and there's some great companies and you know you find your way around it you find you know so yeah that was yeah that makes sense thank you oh. mm maybe i'll just um, continue with like the last two slides i think sure Yeah. So okay, in terms of inspiration, I think uh, I will talk about it in terms of like um, for anybody who is taking up and like uh, getting into something new. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we do is that we learn from something that is already out there. Be it painting, be it uh, photography. You look at the masterworks. You know, this is like how we learn. We've always and for me, since I did not go to a ceramic school or something, for me. trying to i look at a, a master work i look at this you know masterpiece a, cra- a really good craftsman work and i'm like wow how did this person make it i try to make it it's not the idea of imitating the work but it's about like the process to get to making it to see the skill that it takes to make it so in the beginning my forms were very much inspired by what was already out there and trying to attempt a version of it you know but after that i just like i i don't think i can stop in terms of like what all i want to do and say uh, in uh, or find inspiration in you know there's like so much you it's like i can't i cannot ever answer this question properly because i feel like there's just so much yeah i think what is uh, inspiration is not lost sometimes you have like um, the will you know and sometimes you have these down days you have this slump and you're just like i i don't feel like creating i don't want to work i don't i don't um, i can't like i i i know that when i like you just can't get yourself to do it and there are these days when you feel like that um mm-hmm. but that that's not that's not inspiration it's more like this will and that comes from different factors like you know it's just like you have to get out of those and you know that your work will always lift you up and it always happens with me it's like the moment i'm feeling down i'll have to just look at Three four days. What did I do? I did not do my. I was not working. I was not doing this one activity that I like doing, and it's given me a slump. And it's and it's let all these other thoughts fill in. Oh my God, they haven't replied. Oh my God, has my piece reached safely? Will I get this payment? Or, or you know, what's the next gig? All these weird thoughts start question coming in because at this point I've stopped uh, doing, and I started to like overthink. So doing has always helped me uh, to continue to get out of this slump. many times i've had like you know when i've i've looked at my piece i've been 5 4 hours i'm tired and i'm just like i'm not liking it i'm just like i know sometimes i've really pushed myself to make 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 
to so it, i reach a point when i'm just like okay i got it now i can stop you know but you have to push yourself uh, i've had to push myself across that you know sort of threshold a little bit um what i'm working on um recently is um basically like i like since i'm since i'm like i said i keep saying that i haven't studied this stuff so i'm trying to like uh, understand ceramics i'm trying to study ceramics and i'm reading a little bit about prehistoric ceramics and starting from the very beginning i'm trying to find like i'm trying to make a build a project around what makes an object valuable and what is the value of an object without its monetary value like what makes things valuable function form totem objects things that are passed down to you by your grandmother you know these other uh, non monetary quantitative things qualitative things that make things uh, valuable hmm. so this is some of the new pieces that i've made and they're sort of like developed over this understanding hmm. but uh, this is just something that's coming up and it's still in the formation this is yeah yeah this is what like as your uh, skill increases is that the reason why you're moving towards ornamentation more or is it your research that you're doing with like prehistory um and yeah. ceramics you know i always think that when somebody gets really really good with their forms their forms become very very simplistic Oh, because i feel like you know when you you know when the this, when let's say the logo is the most simplest it's the best like you get it in this most slightest way so i feel the same for ceramics right now i'm just having fun you know i want to uh, do different things crazy things and i feel like the finest comes the simplest form takes the most effort and it's the hardest to nail hmm. and it's the kind of a beauty that speaks to you that you just transcends and you know you you look at it and you're just like wow you're just like taken by its just presence and you can't put it in words so right now i'm just having fun honestly it's like the more i can get to experiment in terms of uh, shapes and things like that push push my boundary a little bit in terms of what i'm making so it's right now it's there i really like ornament or ornament to lay mental mental you know ornamentation yeah, yeah ornamentation <laughs> of stuff because i feel like it gets me the chance to make things <clears throat> decor illustrative a little bit with flair and have a little bit like you know of a drama and all these things mm. so i'm basically enjoying it right now also getting into glaze awesome and thought i just use this poster and show you the process of making it till the poster <laughs> it's so beautiful and yeah. this is me awesome yeah it was also really interesting to see was like how you first got into the medium and then it was like a reverse learning process like learning by doing what they always talk about in nid where you get into something and then now you're reading about its history and now you're reading about the theory of it uh, and you're getting yeah. into glazes once you're like now that you're experimenting yeah yeah so yeah i think, think yeah mm -hmm. yeah no? so how do you think that um, that affected your work because in visual communication like in Uh, in NID, we learned the basics, and then we kind of build up. But here, you started building, and now you're building on what you were building in a way. You know, when I was in NID, I remember I used to be like, I used to try to be like force myself to read these like typo books and typography <laughs> books. I'm like, oh, I could learn that. You know, like you know, this is how you become like legit graphic designer and stuff. And I remember somebody very like nicely told me, she's like, Lakita, don't do it. So me, actually, it was Kriti Monga only. She said that basically, don't try to force things. Like you basically, when you're practicing it, and then you're reading. So mm -hmm. when you have a project that has something to do with typography or something, that's the right time to pick up the book. Don't pick it up like in this free space where you're like, you know, forcing to like understand this. Of course, some people yeah. can, but for some people, it just works that it works alongside. Like while you're doing, you're also learning, and then you've basically. you can implement that learning like the reading into your practice so i think it's always mm -hmm. nice to you know when it's creatively you're giving or doing but it's nice to like fill that up with some good thoughts so that are already good information and knowledge and feed that with all the stuff that is out there yeah one of the most shocking things i've heard recently is like that apparently people are using instagram to google information <laughs> so bizarre <laughs> that the people are using it, like instagram to find out information that you would ask on google Hmm. So it's like, what's the weather like? People like are right, uh, asking that on, like, you know, weather today. I was like, whoa, that's bizarre. Bizarre in the sense that it's, it's like, what I'm trying to get to is like the information source that you get. Also, hmm. no, you can't be relying on like watching, let's say, videos of like some artist and being blown away. I mean, yeah. there's such good information. 
just getting like lost with this like flood of like 30 second videos and stuff it's very yeah. sad yeah i also feel like the social media question you're asking um like somebody i met recently told me that you know instagram is now pushing out reels a lot more uh, as a thing so mm-hmm. photos are not working anymore and all and i remember like feeling like shit this is really like it's a like a dependency or something so mm-hmm. now should you like now you should become a videographer and to promote your work that's not i think the most important thing is to like i feel like to remember is that you have to work on your craft that's not going to go away that's not going to change all these mediums to share it will keep on changing evolving but you have to g- grow your thought because people can even copy your stuff but they can't copy the next concept you're going to come up with you know so you have to yeah. enrich like sort of like what you can bring not where you can bring it how you can bring it but as long as the concept and this purity is there in you and what you make mm-hmm. then it can have multiple ways to be shown and seen and everything but yeah, yeah. it's like important to nurture the craft or like yeah yeah and i also like how in your work like it gets reflected like this this fact that designers so much beyond than what what we do like it's everything beyond what we make towards the end where like even in your graphic design work or illustration work or in your ceramics like you can see how your mindsets or your experiences like how you really absorb them and you translate them so well and that's really fulfilling to see so Yeah actually to be honest ceramics is a very you should, you should like try it as a medium like you see like when i speak about this like hand and hand and mental bond thing any activity that involves this stuff it really makes you feel it it's a very fulfilling feeling like um, so it really takes a lot like sometimes you think that you know it's taking a part like you know i'm lit, it's like the clay is a translate like literally like a you know extension of my hands mm-hmm. part of me is going into it you know this is like in the beginning you're being romantic with it and all of that mm-hmm. and eventually you just have to like get to the idea and everything <laughs> but yeah. um i do think that a lot like cooking things like this you know where whichever you're involved with making with your hands you know yeah. it feels very nice and uh, feels uh, true in some way hmm. i think your cat has made a cameo in the background <laughs> so nice yeah <laughs> hari kam <laughs> He's, you can you can see him right yeah slightly like we could see yeah. him before um mm-hmm. it was when it was standing yeah. yeah yeah i think um that's all we don't have any live chat questions for today yeah but um if you're fine with it maybe we can keep this video on for a few days yeah and sure no problem on our face so that people can watch it um yeah. whenever they get time yeah um, Yeah, I'll just stop the stream. Let me thank you.